that there were two things I wanted to accomplish. One was to talk a little bit about the state of wildlife in Wisconsin in terms of what was doing well and maybe what was not doing so well. My contention to be a little on the cheerful side is that most of our wildlife resources are really doing remarkably well. The other was to start out with what I had planned to uh, deal with, which was the imminent release of the 19, uh, 19, the 2016 United States Fish and Wildlife Survey on hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation in the United States. Fish and Wildlife Service conducts this survey of the American public by telephone every five years. And uh, the, the magic number, of course, is a lot of, there's a tremendous amount of information gleaned from this huge survey, but the magic number that most of the people in my business wait for is, okay, how many hunters were there in the United States? And for about the last three decades, up until 2011, which was the last one, that number had been ratcheting slowly down. So the trend was down. And this has caused tremendous consternation among natural resource managers for whom hunters represent the major funding stream for conservation. I'm sure most of you are aware of things like the Pittman-Robertson Act, the 11% excise tax, that anyone who buys a firearm or ammunition or anything like that is collected by the federal government and then distributed back to the states based on the number of hunting licenses they sell. And the result uh, of that constant decline has been almost like a religious crusade amongst many state agencies in an attempt to recruit more hunters and to do just about anything they could think of creatively, whether it was reducing the prices of licenses or offering programs for kids or special hunts or all sorts of tactics which have collectively been under the, which collectively fall under a term now that the professional leaders go, R3, recruitment, retention, and reactivation, R3. On other fronts that are more positive, you know, the eagles were back on our lake this morning flying around. You know, there's a bird, most of us can remember 30 years ago when all the restaurants up here had placemats that were talking about the peril of the loons, the eagles were disappearing, what are we gonna do, gotta do this, gotta do that. Now all of a sudden, you know, these birds have both become quite plentiful and secure. Eagles have been removed from the endangered species list. I think last year the count was 1,502 pairs of nesting eagles in Wisconsin, 1,500. And now in, in 70 of our 72 counties, there are nesting eagles. The only two counties I think are Milwaukee and uh, Walworth, and they'll get eagles sooner or later. So that, that's pretty amazing from a bird that was, oh, we're going to lose them all between DDT and other problems, and now they're virtually everywhere in the state. Pretty neat deal. So there are certainly some birds and success stories like that. I think everybody knows the story of the bear population and how well they've been doing. The restoration of elk has been going very well. You probably saw in the papers just in the last few days that they brought 28 more elk up from Kentucky. Seems odd that we'd be getting elk from Kentucky, but that's another long story. But that's where they're coming from, and there are another group of 28 currently being acclimated, and they'll be released this year to augment the herd uh, over around Clam Lake and in that area. For the past two years, they've been used to start, hopefully start, a successful herd down around Black River Falls. So I think there are two more years on that five-year plan to bring elk up from Kentucky to help with the restoration effort here in Wisconsin that had, the elk were hanging on, but there wasn't nearly as much herd growth as they had hoped for since they were restored in 1995. How many wolves are in Wisconsin today? First of all, the, the numbers game is a very tricky one because um, personally I have a, a reasonable amount of faith in the survey work that's done by the agency and all their volunteers doing the winter tracking and surveying the packs that have a radio collared individual in them and so forth. So I think we got up to the point last winter where the number was beginning to push 900. It had been fluctuating at around six to 800. And, and the original population goal in the management plan was 350. So, and depending on who you ask in, in any tavern from Wausau North, there may be anywhere from three to 33,000. 
Um, that's, that's, again, a quirk of human nature. People are suspicious. You know, wolves are being seen with some regularity. Dogs are being killed, etc. So there's some suspicion there. But after the pupping season, the population might shoot up to 15, 1,600 or more for a short period of time in the early summer when all wildlife populations reach their seasonal high and then it trickles off. A lot of the young ones die and come next winter, you're back down at eight or, eight or 900 or whatever. Um, so there's always some debate over the numbers. The next level of debate that comes in is how many is enough? How many of these things do we need? Well, we need on one end enough to be relatively certain that there's a viable population. I think most people would agree, hey, there are native species. You know, we, enough people are concerned about the demise of wolves on Isle Royal that there's all sorts of thinking about what to do about that. Same thing in Wisconsin on a larger scale that whatever the minimum viable population is, whether it's 350, you can argue that, or maybe it's 550. But as they begin to creep up, they start to bump heads with the human population. We have a pretty heavy footprint on the landscape, and we have livestock, and we have pets, and we're out with hunting dogs and whatnot. So it, it doesn't become as much of an issue of how many wolves Wisconsin could support as it does how many are the, are the people who live with them willing to tolerate. And so there's great debate over what that number is. Um, it, as long as you asked about what the implications are of too few, the implication there is that, all right, so wolves die out again, and we're back in the matter of how we're going to restore wolves. And on the other end, how many is enough will, I don't believe, ever be completely resolved. Why are we losing elk when we're not hunting them? Uh, well, I think the, the slow growth, the slower than hoped for growth in the elk herd has been in part because of predation. And bears have, I think, been shown to be a much more effective predator on things like calves, calf elk, and, and fawn whitetails than most people thought. I mean, it's a compressed interval, but it's important. So predation, highway mortality, stuff that stuff that perhaps they didn't anticipate could have quite as much impact as it has.